Here is a quick podcast to cover the strategies to manage human rights within Afghanistan and looking a little bit at the effectiveness of them as well. So we'll cover the human rights violations, the strategies, and then finally the effectiveness of them. Afghanistan is a landlocked country. There it is on the world map. Um, Very low HDI in 2013. The HDI was 0.468. And it was ranked 169th out of 187 countries for that. There's a high infant mortality rate because of a lack of health care, especially in rural areas. Um, And only around about 5% of women over 25 had received a secondary education. Uh, Huge amounts of poverty and huge amounts of gender inequality. Some of the violations of human rights included uh, the Taliban being in control. So this is a militant group. Uh, And they were in control of 90% of Afghanistan before 2001. Um, There was huge gender inequality, like I say, like 87% of women illiterate. Uh, One out of 11 women have a a chance of dying through childbirth. And a huge instance of forced marriages, 70-80% of forced marriages. Uh, some of the other things, civilian casualties, this is again, of course, the right to life. Um, so this was largely the conflict when the United uh, Nations and USA and various other military forces went into Afghanistan to try and overthrow the Taliban. A lot of civilian casualties. Again, this idea of gender inequality, domestic violence is high on there. Unemployment, possibly as a result of the lack of education or illiteracy. Forced marriages and having a lack of rights. And this is a small report by the UN, um, which just illustrates what we said, the you know, traditional patriarchal gender order. So it's sort of a patriarchal society dominated and led by men. The lack of the rule of law, we've seen this before for various places, poorer countries, LIDCs, are not as effective in implementing the law. Often police officers are corrupt and are willing to take bribes, to, to turn a blind eye to... To issues, or there's just simply not enough funding for police services to uphold the law. So there's a range of strategies to manage these human rights, so we'll go through a couple of them. Uh, The United Nations Assistant Mission uh, in Afghanistan, UNAMA, and you've had a little look at what they do, trying to promote laws, uh, promote accountability for for the Afghanistan government, and trying to maintain rights for women. Afghanistan has worked with countries around the world as well. It's joined also the Economic Cooperation Organization, um, and they're aiming to try and pass laws such as the Elimination of Violence Against uh, Women Law in 2009. And they're trying to forge links with other countries to improve trade, to improve incomes, raise the GDP so they can invest further in the country in healthcare and education. The UN are also involved, of course, in peacekeeping missions. Uh, trying to make areas safe. The military have gone in. There's been military intervention from countries around the world to to try and stop the Taliban from taking control of the country. Uh, Afghan aid, and I like this quote here, from aid to empowerment, and that's what people want. They want to be long-term solutions. Aid is very much a short-term solution. There's so many, so many bottles of clean water and food packages that can be taken to an area. Ideally, we want people to have much longer term solutions to become self-reliant. Other things the military have done, uh, building bridges, improving communications and accessibility for people, lots of remote mountainous areas in Afghanistan, uh, and improving the infrastructure, allowing travel and trade will will open up markets to the agriculture of the interior. The World Food Programme, helping with food supplies, ensuring everybody has an adequate amount of food, uh, they've increased the number of people, a uh, number of women in Parliament as well, um, aiming for that gender equality, or very much part of the Afghan government's role. Uh, and lots of these strategies have proved effective. Uh, there have been more people within schools. Uh, by 2014, um, there sort of six million children were attending school, which was higher by a million from 2001, and 40% were girls, and we can see an example of that there. There's been an increase in women voting, uh, and the purple fingers there, that was a colour that uh, women had been voting. Many of them risked their lives to do that. Uh, It was still viewed by by many um, fundamentalist Taliban people that uh, 
it wasn't the role of women to vote in elections, but many stepped forward and did it and sort of had a, had a purple ink dye on their finger to show that they had taken part. Um, this was from Afghan Aid. You know, 78,000 farmers have been helped within agriculture projects and that will improve food supplies uh, and also improve incomes for those farmers. Other improvements have been uh, health care that has improved. So again, successes with that. Uh, the maternal mortality rate had halved from 2001 to 2014, with a life expectancy increasing from 55 to 61 between 2000 and 2013. This final paragraph sums it up. For the long-term effectiveness of management of human rights in Afghanistan, power needs to be evolved to local communities so people have ownership of solutions and strategies. This is very similar to the work of Afghan aid and other NGOs working in Afghanistan where they're trying to help train local farmers um, to improve their livelihoods and incomes. Where in the capital of Kabul, uh, they are trying to get people involved in the local community so the local people have ownership of what's happening and what they need to work on. There needs to be to a change in the cultural norms of the country uh, and the people to accept women into parliaments and into various other jobs and schools. So this idea of gender equality, education being particularly important for, for women so they can go on to, to get the jobs. Hopefully that helps with uh, managing human rights in Afghanistan and just one piece of support that we can put in place.